So it looks like that's good. Looking good to me. Trying to get a periscope and I'm trying to get periscope and um <sighs> trying to get periscope and Google Live YouTube Live going at the same time. All right, let's see if we can do this. YouTube and Periscope at the same time. Let's see here. Properties. Let's do microphone Yeti. Okay, so it looks like they're both live. They're both working. Um, all right, so I have to just mute this. And I have to mute this one as well. Yeah. Okay. So, in case you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, <laughs> I am working on live streaming at Google and Periscope at the same time. And I have it working. So, it's kind of interesting. I'm just going to see what the quality looks like before I can keep pat myself on the back and think I'm doing a good job. Well, hello. I am right now. Um, huh? It just went orange for. So I don't know how my how my scopes are doing. I'm live streaming on YouTube and Periscope at the same time, with two instances of um, OBS Studio running simultaneously. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. How's the? How, well, I guess. Hey. Let me see here if I if I throw my silly camera up, what will happen here? Where is my cam? There's the cam. Where is it? Forgive me, I'm talking to myself while I'm trying to get the. Uh... Wow. Okay. So this is this is kind of interesting for me because I'm running dual monitors. I'm running YouTube and I'm running YouTube and Periscope at the same time. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> I'm so new to Periscope. I'm so new to everything. I'm just kind of trying to figure out how this is going to work here. So I go to properties. Yes. And it only let me stream one camera at a time. So I'm, I'm really confused. Um, I was reading up on how to do a live stream on YouTube and how to do a live stream on Periscope at the exact same time. And unfortunately, this is really kind of, kind of weird. Only because it's working on one of the OBS studios and not on the other and I'm not sure I'm not sure why so right now if I go to YouTube and I go to my channel I wish I would quit asking me to save this stuff so all right so just for giggles, here's the live stream on YouTube, and it's almost identical to Periscope, except I can't get the camera, I can't get the camera to do it on both of them. It sucks that you can't just enter both of the stream, it sucks that you can't just enter both of the streams, so it's got a place to enter the server information for Periscope. So why in the hell won't it let me? Hmm. I'm just so confused. It won't let me do both of them. Like the camera won't let me. Hmm. I just have no idea. It seems so dumb. So what if I... <sighs> yeah. 
It's confusing. I don't know. I, I have the live stream running on YouTube right now. I have the live stream running on Periscope right now. And it doesn't seem to want to behave itself. This is Periscope here. So if I go to Window Capture, Properties, and maybe I can pull up this. Okay. And then... So that is the YouTube video here. This is YouTube right now. And that's what I see on YouTube. And if I wanted to change the Kali background image, I can, there, I took it away. I can hit my PC and get rid of that. So there's that. Hmm. So I can play with play with all this crap See this image so I can drag that yeah. so I don't know if anybody gives a crap but what I'm doing is I am this is I'm doing Periscope and YouTube live at the same time two streams on the same computer with two versions of OBS Studio. I'm using OBS Studio 20.0.1 64-bit for Windows. And so what I'm showing you is my live stream on YouTube right now. And I posted the link already. Unfortunately, it's kind of sucky because the, you can't just use one interface of, you can't just use one interface of OBS Studio and link it to two two accounts which I think is asinine I think you should be able to go in there and if you're doing Twitch and YouTube and um, Periscope you should be able just to enter your your URLs for each of them and then you have uh, an encryption key for each of them and so you sh in my opinion you should be able just to add each one in and stream the same content instead of having multiple instances of it open and I think you can do that with paid programs, but this one is free and open source. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just... Uh, okay, so now, um, now I'm able to get paid through YouTube. So if I wanted to uh, allow people to send me what they call super, super chat or whatever, where you pay me a dollar and you can put your high Lyle up there and have it shown for everybody in the YouTube stream because you can do that in Periscope right now for you know I'm not ever going to charge people for that it's just something that YouTube has offered and so I was playing with it to see what it would look like uh, right now it's just kind of playing with it more than anything so this is live on YouTube live on Periscope really nothing wonderful to show um, gonna be doing some Kali Linux stuff a little bit later doing a live basically a live session of my online classes and then today I'm going to go to the college and try and get my server book I might just call up to the bookstore if I can find their number and call them and ask them if they have it in and go up and get it. I have two books to take back, which would be the InfoSec book on hacker techniques, tools, and incident handling and the fundamentals of information systems security because I found them for $30 cheaper on Amazon. So I bought, I saved $60 by buying them on Amazon and returning them to the bookstore because they charged me $168 for something I didn't actually need that was non-refundable which was a a license key to let's see what was it it was to like the PC Pro certification 
which the PC Pro certification is I'll show you what the PC Pro certification is. Test out. So it's a the PC Pro certification um, is like if you had 12 months of computer expertise, like 12 months of working with computers. I, I I'm at least a 15 year veteran of working on computers, so it's kind of it's kind of silly but I I went ahead and registered it anyways and so I should be able to log in to test out if I wanted so how do I log in silly guys oh there we go log in So this is test out. This is the website that you go to. Um, to take your certification and stuff like this. And this is through my school. The only way I was able to log in was to use the school stuff I used from my networking class. So in here you'll see like um, I have I have two so as I have two classes the one w that I actually took was um, IT 111 fall of 2017 and that was uh, networking and that would get me the network pro oh, damn it my nose which is so yeah this is the network pro and the test out network. so network pro PC pro and what they are is their live labs so I'll just close I'll just choose the network one it lets me go through Let's try this. Sorry, my daughter is uh, Which one? New capture. Okay, so here we are looking at um, this is what the lab looks like. So let me see if I can shrink it down. Daughter, are you going to go to school today? Sorry, I just have to shrink this down so I can show you guys what it looks like. All right, so this is a virtual lab. And I have to do it on both of these damn things. So I have to do it on both the... And forgive me, I'm going to have to go yell at my daughter to get her up and and around so if she doesn't get up in like 10 seconds that damn alarm is going to drive me nuts and all right so hello everyone just for a quick review what what I'm doing is the scenario is you work in an IT and you're, you're the IT administrator for a small company network you just received a new computer that you're setting up in the office. Your task is to 
Plug in the power strip to the wall, plug the computer into the power strip, connect following components to the computer, the keyboard, the mouse, the speakers. So this is really like a no-brainer for me personally. But anyways, I'm going to walk through doing this. I'm going to show you how it works. So what we want to do is go to cables. All right. I need outlets. There it is. So then you just kind of drag this over here and boom, there it is, right? Then I'm going to flip this computer. You go up here where it says back, you flip the sucker over, there you go. Now what you want to do is you want to get the cables. So right here off the bat, we know that we're going to need this cable. I don't know if you can see underneath or not. Let me look and see if it'll show it. I do not see it. So again, I'm going to have to minimize this thing and shrink it down to fit. Good Lord. So here we go. Let's make it even smaller. Okay. There we go. So here's the computer. Down here below, you're going to see the. I have to do this on the other one. And this is what's such a frustration. If I was doing this and going to make this like my livelihood. I would definitely want to pay for a program that allowed me to um, do both of these windows at the same time. So down below you're going to see there is the AC power cable, right? That was on the shelf. Then there's the female end and the unconnected end. So obviously we click this end and we drag it up and we put this into here. Now I'm going to click on this and you're going to see here's this 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 cable here belongs to this power strip you plug that into the wall boom now this cord has power so I can click on this cord and it tells me this is the unconnected end you see that so then I take this and I plug it right into the back of this okay unfortunately this rocker switch is somebody set it to on which I mean ideally it would not be set to on when you plug that in so that's probably that's probably a bad thing I'm going to take this cable, I'm going to take this end, I'm going to plug it into, this is a DVI. The white one is the DVI, this is VGA. We want DVI. Boom. There's that. Now I can, now I can go and, so this is probably, this is probably the cable for the monitor. But let me get the monitor out. Here's the monitor. Boom. I'm going to set this here on the desk. There's the monitor. Now I'm going to flip it over to the back. There's the DVI, right? So now I'm going to go back to the DVI cable. There it is. This one's unconnected, so I'm going to plug it into here. Boom. Now I also need the cable for the power. Here's another. So I'm going to plug this in to here. Okay. Now I can flip this thing back around to the front because I don't need anything. Um, so now what I need is to slide this thing over to here. I need to look at, well, I'm sorry, I need to flip that thing around to the back. No, this. Sorry, this lab is, is for whatever. It's not a bad lab. You just There's nuances with this. So here's the back. I need to take this cable, scoot this over here. Here's the unconnected end. And this is going to go into here. I'm going to flip this computer to the back. I'm going to grab this Ethernet cable. I'm going to plug there because that's the Ethernet plug and then here to the back of this. And then I believe I'm supposed to plug in a keyboard and a mouse. So here's the mouse and I'll put that here. It says that's invalid. Why is it invalid? Where is the mouse? Here, tell me where the mouse is actually supposed to go. So here's the front of this. I drag the mouse down. I don't know where they want. Oh, they want the mouse here. There's the mouse. So I click on the mouse and hopefully there's the USB cable you plug it in I'm just gonna plug it in the first one I don't think it actually matters 
we'll find out. Then I'm going to plug in this to the second USB port. And there's the keyboard. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I just flip this rocker switch on. Go to the front. If I push this power button, oh, printer. Okay, so printer, boom. Where do I put the printer at? Here. All right, there's the printer. Flip that to the back. I'm gonna need a power cord. So cable, there's this one. Plug this into this here, boom. And while I'm here, might as well take this, plug this end into the back of the printer. I'm done with this. I can flip it around to the front. I can go to the back, plug in the USB. And what's left, the, the cable that goes into What's left is plugging the power cable for the HP printer. So partial connections. There we go. Go here. Sorry, this is really the way these labs are work. I'm just doing real time showing you how the labs actually work in the test out. So this is this is us why this is us doing this lab together kind of what's left speakers here's the speakers so boom here's the back of this drop these speakers down where there we go there's the speakers front oh boom this goes in the green there's the green Flip this to the front. I believe, honest to God, I could push the power button. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I have just set up the computer like it asked me to do. Um, this is really, this is really sad to me because I've spent 15 years building computers and doing this as an, as an IT professional but you know this unfortunately the school sold me the PC Pro certification online thing and it's non-refundable so I had to do this and so I'm streaming this on YouTube I'm streaming this on Periscope just to um, show that I'm doing the classwork and what it looks like um, connect the computer blah 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 when you have the connected all the devices turn it on if you notice any problems okay well let's see here it looks good to me I see it like I see everything working I'm gonna hit done and I got a hundred percent so if I didn't I would be embarrassed to be honest um, I would definitely consider like working at McDonald's if I couldn't if I didn't get a hundred percent on this I would have like thought hey I'm gonna stop doing all this tech stuff and go work at McDonald's right now today go apply and boom so there's that so this this might be fun I'm gonna skip the video all right let's see forgive me if I don't pass this I mean I haven't read anything if I don't pass it I feel stupid but you're looking at the female TRS connector on the computer. Which device uses this connector? TRS. See, this is bad because I don't actually know what the hell TRS stands for. TRS. The female TRS. Uh, I don't know. I would think speaker. That's. I have no idea. Check answer. A TRS is used for audio connectors. Okay, that would have been my... S what? Did I get it right? Oh, I did. Wow. Woohoo! That was a good guess, right? One guess down. Let's try another one. You purchase a new LED monitor. On the back, you see an HDMI... No. I think that's DisplayPort. That's definitely not HDMI. HDMI would be um, like a D all the way around, and this is flat. So I'm going to guess that's a DisplayPort. 
Like you used to get those all the time with Dell. That is the display port, right on. Um, you're connecting an older piece of crap dot matrix printer. Well, not necessarily, lots of people use them. The printer is a D-shaped connector with 25 pins. 25 pins. What's that, parallel? Shit. I'm gonna say parallel. Ah, oh, my wife's calling me. Hello, dear, what can I do for you today? What do you want me to do? Honestly, um, I don't care if she stays home this one more day and then she should be okay. by Monday. And she is today well. Friday? Yes. Okay. Well, then that's fine. I don't I care. She's not feeling well. That's fine. Okay. Love you. Go back to bed. All right. Love you bye. Too. Bye. All right, daughter, you can go back to bed. Mom said so. Well, um, yeah, I should be able to... Hmm, 25 pin. I'm just gonna... God, I... Dot, ma dot matrix is old. Is it older than parallel port, though? Yeah, that's like Apple to E, and that... 25 pin. I don't know how many pins are on a parallel port, to be honest. I never really thought about it. Let's try serial port. God, no! Oh, man. Oh, that's what I get for second guessing myself. Damn it. Nine pins for serial port. Huh. Okay. You know that a projector only has a VGA port. How would you describe the connector that the user should look for? For a VGA port? How many is in there? Like 15? Rectangle with one. Shit, I don't know. I just tell them it's the blue one. Why don't you just tell them it's the blue one, dumbass? Use the blue one. Maybe they need me to be more specific. D shape with 15 pins? Does that sound right? Okay, this is the blue one. Oh, I see. So this is like more like technical, like you need to know. Um, so USB, USB is D. Let's just start with the easy ones. VGA is E. Okay, easy enough. Um, Thunderbolt, really? Thunderbolt? That's probably Firewire, don't you? No, Fiber S. Now I would be fiber S for audio probably. Audio jack is um, J. Thunderbolt I'm gonna say is C firewire. C. And it's stupid that they don't use the same terms F um, for everybody. This is isn't that firewire? Isn't that what we used to call it? I think that's what that. And then A is HDMI. Maybe that's Firewire. I triple E thirteen ninety four. That sounds like Firewire. So what the hell would Thunderbolt be? Maybe Thunder. So let me do RJ forty five is F. Oh no, that's G. Sorry. I'm looking. There's G. Okay. What did I do with the RJ45G? And then C. So I'm gonna go B is Thunderbolt. Just process of elimination. C I would call 1394. I think that's the technical term for Firewire. RJ11 is H. That's a phone line, modem line. And then J of course is that. And check this out. Boom, okay. So uh, I can be taught. Okay, so A. A is HDMI, right? Digital monitor. Do we have HDTV? I'm going to go A with the HDTV. 
um, B with the audio. So I'm doing the PC Pro stuff right now. Um, an analog monitor would be D. D will put analog monitor. And external storage device would be C. I'm guessing. Video camera, no. Video camera would be C, FireWire. Okay, external storage device would be G for the USB, like if you're using, damn, I hate this. I drag and drop what I think is in my opinion. Analog, D. Dial-up modem would be H. God, whoever's using a dial-up modem, I am so sorry for you. Digital monitor without audio, DVI would be E. Network adapter, F. And headphones would be B. Perfect. So if I'm not mistaken, this should be, I should ace this. I only missed one because I second guessed myself in the first one. Um, so, which of the following are considered computer hardware? Motherboard. Do you consider a do you consider a printer hardware or a peripheral? I'm going to throw that as a peripheral. Well, okay, that's sure. Hardware. Okay. I would assume the hardware was the internal components of the computer, but if you want to call the printer hardware, the, I can get that. But that's that's a peripheral in my opinion. Which computer function takes data through a series of procedures as defined by a set of instruction? Processing, maybe? That seems legit. You need to replace a broken monitor on a desktop. You decide to replace it with a spare one that wasn't being used. Even though the monitor is made by a different manufacturer than the desktop, it still works. Which computer design concept makes this possible? Uh, standardization, maybe? Is that right? Yeah, that's just sad, but yeah. Um, oh, yeah, back in the day when you had, like, Compaq and stuff, you know, way back, you had a lot of things that were specific for the computers and so you can just pull a card out and put it in another one so maybe that's what they're talking about here um, which of the following are considered input devices well I would say a keyboard keyboard a microphone and a scanner because those are all things that can take a signal coming into them and convert it a monitor's output, a printer's output, and a RAM, I don't know, I just assume that's an internal. Okay. Drag the computer function on the left that's associated with the hardware on the right. So processing, definitely the CPU. Long-term storage, hard disk. Printer is output. Microphone is input. The DVD rewrite, I think that could be input or output, don't you? Doesn't that seem legit? Because you can put a disc in the DVD and have that be input. Or you could write to it and have it be output. So speakers would be output. So, hey, I am doing a lab for a class I'm not even taking just because I'm silly. And then I don't know, I don't know what this is actually saying, if it's input or output. We could say long-term storage. I mean, shit, I'll do that. Sorry. Ah, it was a trick question because it can be input or output. Ah. Which connector on the back of a computer is used to attach a mouse to a modern PC? Uh, shoot. USA A or B? I don't know. Can, is it? It's probably a bad thing to like look at Google, but here I go. I, this, this is bad. I don't know. A. 
which one's A and B. So the second one must be B. So I'm going to say A. Okay, good. So the B is the squared one for the back of a printer. Hey! <laughs> no, you're fine. I was just like, hey, you're, uh, you're looking at a high density three row female DB15 on the computer as shown in this figure below what device? That looks like a monitor connected. Some modems that use. All right. You're helping a customer over the phone that needs to connect a monitor that uses a digital interface. Which port should you instruct them to look for? Oh my God. Oh yeah, look for the DVI one. What, what does that look like? Um, it's a bunch of like slotted pins, like metal pins that look like the end of a flathead screwdriver. There'll be a bunch of them and then one of them looks like it has a hook on one side or the other and then you have a white cable most likely you want to plug into it so that's my guess okay but Jesus yeah you just tell them 86 boo boo um, I'm gonna go through one more time and just do this right uh, oh this one's gonna be difficult you're looking for the TRS that's the speaker okay one more time, because I have to get 100% on this for my own self, otherwise I can't live with myself. You're printing, connecting a, I said parallel port, and I second guessed serial port last time. Um, so you're looking for the D shape with 50 pins. Yeah, okay, good. Shit, this was the one I didn't like, so C. B is that Thunderbolt. B is Thunderbolt. Okay. And then E is DVI. D is VGA. Audio Jack is J. RJ11 is H. G is RJ45. That's okay. This is why I'm doing this. I was hoping maybe somebody, anybody, might like find the tedious shit that I have to do for school, like at least mildly. Um... Oh wait, this is E. So this is F. I I know what I'm doing. I the the letters are over here, and there's a little line. So let's make sure I get this right. A is HDMI. B is Thunderbolt. C is that. D is USB. And then fiber is I. Okay. And just to make sure I got all that right, G and H. That's right. Check answer. Booyah. Okay, next. All right. External storage device. This is G for the external storage device. That would go to a hard drive, like a external hard drive. Analog monitors, D. That's a VGA. Video camera, that's FireWire. It's kind of old school, but they still use it. HDTV, of course, is going to be your HDMI, which is A. Your dial-up modem, like what kind of poor, what kind of poor bastard is still using that H over there for dial-up modem? Poor guy. Jump on gigabit Ethernet, my friend. Digital monitor. Oh, digital monitor. We can use the DVI cable for that. I was going to say, well, why not use the HDMI? Because they want us to use E. There you go, E. Network adapter. That's going to be your RJ45. Here, F. So, well, of course it's B, but let's go look. Of course. That's for your headphones, right? We all know that. Because they're not Bluetooth. This is so old school. So let's check answer. Did I get them right? I did. Yay. Um, which of the following are, are considered computer hardware? Select two. Hardware. The motherboard and the printer. I consider the printer to be a peripheral, but 
Yeah, that's what it says. Which computer function takes data through a series? Of course, that's processing. It's a series of procedures as defined by a set of instructions. That's what a processor does. Just check it to make sure it says yes. So there we go. You need to replace a broken ass monitor. You decide to grab a spare one, even though the monitor is made by a different company. So your computer's a Dell, your monitor's HP. It still works with a computer. Which computer design concept makes this happen? It's called standardization, and there's very little of it, not enough of it, in the computer world. For example, just the naming concept where you can call a flash drive, a thumb drive, a USB stick, you know, a hundred different names for the same damn thing. And it's all just a flash drive. But um, which of the following is considered an input device? Well, a keyboard is a, a microphone and a scanner, are all three input devices, because you can put your voice into a microphone and send it to the computer. You can scan a document into the computer. You can type on the keys and it goes into the computer. The monitor, the printer, those are output, and then I would think that's an internal hardware component, the RAM. So let's check that answer. It says yes. All right. Drag the computer function on the left, which is associated with hardware components on the right. Input. Um, input would be the microphone. Long-term storage would be a hard disk. Long-term storage would be a DVD rewrite. Although you could you could seriously consider the DVD rewrite as input or output. If you're putting a disk in the drive and reading off from it, that seems input. And if you you know, in my personal opinion, and then if you're burning it to a disk, that would be output in my opinion. Processing um, CPU. Maybe the RAM microphone would be input, speakers would be output, keyboard would be input. Damn it, I hope I get the RAM right. Just for my own self, I hope that's right. Shoot, here it goes. Crap. What? No! Oh, I didn't put the printer in there. Oh, son of a bitch. The printer's obviously output. I knew that. I just guess I missed it. I didn't see it. So, user error. ID10T error. Which connector in the back of the computer is used to attach a mouse? Obviously, it's a USB. And A is what we know because B is for the back of a printer, the little squared off little thing. So, A. This is VGA. Yes. Dang it. You are helping a customer over the phone who needs to connect a monitor that uses a digital interface, which, so yeah, he's gonna know when you've got a customer, right? You, you're an IT guy and you, okay, how many of you, if I said plug in the DV cable, how many of you would know? Type in one if you would know and two if you wouldn't know the DVI, what the DVI was. One if you know what the DVI is, two if you don't. And let's just see how accurate this is. So, I'm going to tell you to plug in the DVI cable. It says, hey, just tell them to plug in the DVI cable. And you're going to know what that is. Yeah, okay. Boom. It says so. So, I got one wrong. I'm going to get 86. Oh, I got a 99. I can live with a 99, I guess. I guess. <sighs> I guess I can live with a 99. Shoot. Windows Basics, what are the functions of the kernel? Okay, what are the functions? And so here's a video. And so this goes through and it just has somebody that talks at you. And they'll show you some things and it's okay. So this guy's gonna talk at me. There's an interactive script. So if, I, if, if I'm more of a reader, I can just read this. If, if I wanna just print this out and not listen to this guy's spiel on everything, I just print this out and read it. Um, so what was the kernel? The operating system also acts as the hardware, of course, provides security, manages the file system, the kernel. The first component of the operating system is called the kernel. The kernel is the core of the operating system. It's what's loaded into memory when the system boots up. The kernel performs most of the critical operating system jobs that, were, that he was talking about, apparently. It's responsible for managing the file system. This is um, test out for PC Pro. 
PC Pro is basically like test outs version of the A plus from CompTIA. This is uh, you can go to testout.com. What happened was I'm taking cybersecurity and computer forensics, and the bookstore sold me this online code. And once you buy it from the bookstore, it's not returnable. So I took networking last quarter, um, with or actually f like winter of last year. And so I knew who the instructor was. I'd already done the networking through test out. And so I just punched my key in and linked it to my teacher and then it gave me access. If I didn't know who the teacher was, I wouldn't have been able to access it, but <clears throat> I knew who the teacher was. So um, <clears throat> the deal with my teacher, she says, if you can go through this and get your, if you can ace this, she'll give you a 4.0 without having to attend class. So I'm just gonna go in and get a 4.0 in this because I'm a 15 year old, 15 year old, I'm a 15 year <laughs> computer technician. I've been working on computers since middle school and I'm 43 so you can imagine it's been a little bit of time. So if I don't do well in this, I will be embarrassed. But I'm not even gonna read it, I'm just gonna go through and try to, um, just this. I'm just gonna blow through this and see if I can <laughs> All right, 10 questions. Can I get this? Which Windows component can be used to display information such as weather forecast, time, and news? Um, this is old as hell, but it used to be called uh, gadgets, like with Vista. I don't know if that's still the case. It is. Yay. Which component of Windows prompts the user for credentials or permission? To, uh, that would be UIC, user account control. Is that right? Thank you, Windows. So. Um, which of the following items are likely to be displayed in the notification area of a computer running um, select two icons representing all currently open documents? Uh, no shortcuts launched recently used application volume control that one uh, the current time it says two let's see yeah I think the time Shoot, I would think the time, the volume control, and the icons representing all currently open. Oh, no, no, no. No, just the, you know how like you click that little thing down at the bottom and it shows you like Bluetooth and all that stuff. Well, let's see if that's right. Okay, it likes me. Which Windows tools would you use to browse the file system on a drive? Select three. File system on a drive. Windows Explorer, maybe? File Explorer, Taskbar, huh, uh, those are my guesses. Oh, computer, Taskbar. What was I thinking, the little, what I was thinking was probably, hmm, computer, okay, sure. Works for me, I got one wrong, I can deal with that. Which operating system include the following features? Cortana, Cloud Storage, Continuum. Um, which operating systems include this? Well, Cortana, that's Windows 10, so I think that's, geez, wow, okay. That was, that was a narrow it down kind of thing. What is the name of the set of features that improves the visual appearance of Windows? These features include, but are not, Oh, it wants me to type it in. Ah, what's the name of a set of features? I don't know. In Windows 7, it was called Arrow. Is that what it's called here? Arrow? Shit. Wish me luck. Okay, it liked me again. Without reading, I know this because it just is easy to me. Which of the following is a term used for a set of programs that acts as an interface between the applications that are running on a computer and the computer's hardware? set of programs drivers that's got to be driver hopefully applications my bad I was thinking hardware ah uh, maybe if I had coffee I could do a little bit better oh well I'm still gonna get an 80 most likely, but I'm I, I'm I'm a weirdo. I have I have to get 100%. Match the operating system attribute on the left to the correct description on the right. Ability to use multiple processing devices. 
capabilities, multiple applications. Hmm. I think I have multi-threading and multi-processing backwards, but no. Okay. I just don't want to second guess myself. I seem to lose when I do that. Which of the following is the name of the core of the operating system? That's the kernel. I'm not even going to read the whole thing. Okay, because I already knew. You need to find a file that you saved on your computer. You will have to search for it because you don't remember what di directory it's in. Which Windows feature improves the speed indexing? Boom. Wow, I love it when I don't have to... Oh, score it. What did I get? 80... Ah, oh, 80%. I win. <laughs> skip, 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 win. <laughs> oh, it, but this hurts. I, I actually feel like I need the the 100%. I know that's sad, but that's that's the reality of this for me. Uh, so how many pieces of this thing are there? There are... 13, 13 different sections, I guess, or chapters. Thir 13 with God only knows how many different pieces inside. And I could probably, I could probably go through this in a weekend. I could probably go through this in a weekend or a couple weekends anyways. And the nice thing is it remembers, it remembers. And so I'm gonna take this as an elective class and I'm not gonna to go to school. I'm just gonna turn in my work. Um, I'm gonna save it all, turn it in, get an A without ever having to go to class. I don't know why, <laughs> it's just, so here's another lab. In this simulation, you're gonna use Linux such as touch by CP, MV, CD. Um, so I am not really a Linux aficionado. I use Linux to do certain things, but mostly it's like one trick pony. I'll use Linux to copy an entire Windows disk over to a backup image so that Windows says there's nothing on the disk and I can use Linux to prove that to be wrong. So, this is one of those labs where I'm going to show you another instance of... So here we are in Linux. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to type in root. Let's see if I can do this. Send keys. Oh. No, I don't want to do that. Can I just type in root and then tour root? Oh, come on now. Oh, man. What is the... Uh, what is the command for is it sudo and then what do you type in before it i i i'm sorry i'm so out of date with linux i know it's uh <laughs> i don't know ah this is probably way out of the pay grade for what this assignment is but it says um you're in the current directory w adams home enter the command is slash i or l for list right so I want to go, oh, ls, is that right? ls dash l. Okay. Enter the command rm. And then I hate this. It's on two different lines, right? So is it, um, uh, so it's so frustrating. It's like, okay, see this up here? It says uh, rm and then old my t file dot text. So is there a space? Is it rm space? Because I can't tell with the way this is. It must be because if it wasn't, it would all have to be on one line. That's right, probably. Old underscore my file dot text cannot remove old my file dot oh txt so if i do up with the up arrow you see how it just automatically puts all that text back then i don't have to retype that's one of my favorite things about cmd command line um are you sure yeah it says hit y or yes okay done now i want to go ls dot l and 
see that the old my file is gone. Okay. Create a new file by typing in touch new my file dot text. I got to remember the T on that, remember? All right. And then use the uh, VI editor. I don't know what VI is. VI new my file dot text. And what will be really cool is later on, I'll show you like the encryption. <sighs> okay, so this is the text editor. Is that what this is? Press the I key to insert mode. Okay, so I insert. There it is. Enter the text. Test text for my new. Okay. So I want to type in test text for my new underscore my file dot txt. Then press the escape key and enter colon WQ. Ah, what the hell did I do? Escape. Ah, oh, what the hell did I do? This is so much fun. Enter the text, test text for my new, enter escape key and enter colon WQ. Okay, there we go. To save and exit, copy the new file by CP new my file dot txt. Then home. So this is the path to the directory in Linux. This is this is why people are like, oh, Linux is so hard. If you don't like typing, then yeah, it is. All right, so then I moved it. Okay, so now I moved it into, enter the command pwd, pwd, it says I'm in home atoms, oh, practice. What did I do wrong? Was I supposed to add the period at the end? I think I must have been. So let me try cp new my file dot txt slash home slash w atoms slash practice period and then ls dot l. Okay, so I think I did that. I think I have an extra file in there. And then MV new my file dot txt to final my file dot txt period. And then list oops sorry about that ls space l all right oh look i spelled final wrong it says t i n i a l tinal boo did i pass no what's going to do i got wow i got 1 out of 4 points i don't care i don't care is next, please. You have informed users that you need to bring the machine down. Use a 15 minute delay to shut the computer down. Hmm. 
Sorry, I don't do Linux enough to know what the hell I'm supposed to do, and I didn't read the lab, so done. Shut down. Use uh, shut down minus H for out. Oh, plus 15. It is time for a shutdown to send the message to login users. So basically, this is the answer right here. If I would have done that, I would have won. Everyone would have cheered, and I would have married the most beautiful girl in all of the land. And then my wife would have beat me senseless for doing that. So next. Start the exam, right? Let's see what it is. What would you enter to start a new born again shell session? So what I should probably do, what I should probably do is go through and read the stuff about Linux so I can actually understand what the hell I'm doing because that would be helpful, I imagine. Woo! Right on. Hello, person on YouTube watching me right now. I hope it's not me watching myself, because that would be embarrassing talking to myself. But if it's not me, then hello to you. Hello to everyone on Periscope. I'm streaming this on both Periscope and um, YouTube at the same time here. I'm... I'm pretty sure I just want to exit out of this. Let's go to the next question, please. Is in a working directory? I don't know. Maybe ls uh, space l, maybe. Check the answer. Oh, yeah. I need I need some love for Linux here. <sighs> what would you enter at the command prompt on a Linux system to play the IP address in the subnet? Shoot, I don't know. Probably not ping, but <laughs> uh, I know some of these. I f config. Okay, shit. I need to just stop while I'm behind. And what would you enter at the command prompt on a Linux system to display a list of files? Wait, oh. well, yeah, I know this one. Is that right? At least Linux. Just ls. Okay, fine. Ah, uh, you logged in as a user with limited system privileges. You are on Linux. Um, and you have the password to the root user account when you need to switch to root performance I, I know it's sudo but what is it is it at sudo pound sudo I don't know shit I don't remember I don't use Linux enough to know oh su okay super user oh yeah like if you root your Linux phone of course uh, Man, I feel bad. I need I need an updated Linux. You want to know more about the usage, command syntax, and options available in the Linux IF config. What would you enter at the command prompt? I don't know. Is it question mark like it is in Windows? Probably not. I have no damn a clue. I'll go back through and read that one again. Man, IF config. Man. Okay. So I suck at Linux. I've learned that just now that um, while I can use Linux to do the things I want to do, um, as far as the command line goes, I suck at it. Um, review. Show me everything. Hmm. Well, that's embarrassing, but so be it. Return to exam. Score the. I got a zero. Oh my god, I should just stop. Of course, I'm a Windows technician, and I've been using Windows, and before that, I was on Apple. The only Linux experience I have is using Nopix and Backtrack and Kali, and just doing like simple things that. I don't know, I basically just grabbed the CDs and played with it, but, oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, well, I don't care. This this isn't even a class I'm enrolled in. Oh, wow, so Mac. Okay, so now I have to learn. I have not done anything on Mac either. Crap, this will be so much fun. You can actually right-click on Map. I didn't think you could, I didn't think there was a right-click on Mac. I just assumed that Windows was the only one that had the right click 
properties and stuff like that. Scroll down. Oh, well, I think I am done with, um, <laughs> I think I'm done with the, I'm so embarrassed by that Linux thing though. That's just horrible. <laughs> I feel, I feel so dumb with the, uh, lack of knowledge for, for that. I mean, truth be told, I have little to no practical knowledge of Linux other than just the few things that I've done over the years for myself. And using the user interfaces, the graphical user interfaces. So, woo, there's that. And so I was basically just testing out, um, right on. Yeah, so I, I took Network uh, Network Plus or Network Pro last winter. I The school accidentally sold me a copy of, this is PC Pro, and I'm not enrolled in, in this class. So I had a $168 certificate to this class, and I I'm not even enrolled in it. So I don't know. I just was playing with it. And I went through and realized real quick that I need, it might be useful to take it and watch it and pick up the Linux stuff a little bit because I don't really have my head wrapped around the command lines of Linux. I've been a Windows technician for a long time, so I'm taking uh, dom uh, Windows domains this quarter. I'm taking ethical hacking and cyber secure. Oh no, ethical hacking this quarter and intro to InfoSec, Info System Security. So taking the hacking and the intro because I started in winter quarter instead of fall. So the intro class would have been in the first fall, but I, I started class late because I wasn't even planning to go back to school. Woo. So what do you take? Um, what are you taking for, for your class? You see, I'm also doing, uh, what's the other one that I'm using? What is the other one that I'm using here? Let's see. InfoSec. Let's see. Info. Lab.infosec learning labs. Nice. Congrats. So here is. Here is, um, this is InfoSec Learning, and this is the Ethical Hacking and Systems Defense. Hopefully it'll go live on. Intro to Linux, sweet. That sounds like a good class. I should have probably jumped on that myself. I don't know if it's, I don't know what's going on. It doesn't seem like it's, is the. So YouTube is showing YouTube is showing the correct thing. But um, let me see if I, ref if I refresh this. I'll be right back. I'm going to refresh the browser. OK, here we go. Can, uh, I hope you can see what I'm seeing. It says your labs, and it says ethical hacking and systems defense. So, um, performing reconnaissance on, from the WAN, scanning the network on the LAN. So this is the ethical hacking. And then down below is the basically intro to information, information security. So these are the online labs that I'll be dealing with. And then also one that is um, on Windows domains for servers and things like that. So basically what I was doing is I'm using the the OBS studio to stream to both YouTube and to Periscope at the same time. So yeah, I'm not sure what in the world is 
is this video still working and can you somebody tell me if the video is still working because um, I'm not sure what's happening it looks like it is on my side but then um, the video is frozen on on the other part of it anyways so I'm really t I didn't sleep much I was hoping I could get on here and just kick some ass and do this but anyways this is pretty much the gist of it I just want to see what's going on if you guys want to see my setup there's a there's a there's another one of my scopes that shows my 34 inch monitor with the 24 inch up above it and if you want to see what if you want to see what it looks like when you do one of these labs I'll show you real quick I need a new I need a new chair for my desk. I put a different desk in here and now this chair just does not work. So when you click this, this is infosec.learning.com online lab. So I'm going to plow through this class right here. Okay, so what I'm doing is launching a virtual machine. This is infosec.learning.com lab securing PFSense firewall. So this is going to be um, the introductory introduction to info security, the first lab, and this will be simply setting up the. PFSense firewall. I don't know if it'll, I'm not sure exactly how this virtual lab is set up. I don't know if there'll be like a hard piece of hardware and we just put it on a virtual machine. I'm not sure if it's like installing it on a real honest to goodness box or how that works. So bear with me. This takes about up to five minutes it can take to um, load. I don't think it should. I'm on a gigabit internet connection wired and so it should not be it should not be that difficult or that hard for it but most of what's happening is going to be on their end so there it says right there we're doing tons of things behind the scenes setting up your environment so it's, it has nothing to do with my internet speed my internet speed is kick-ass I should be um, I should be fine this is more on their end than anything else so just hang out chill grab something to drink I don't know if you drink monster energy drinks or like so grab a slice of breakfast pizza and then monster energy drink and sit back and chill for a minute but that'll probably kill your kidneys and your heart and whatever else internal organs you have left <laughs> uh, you, you, it's all good it's so funny because like on my computer opening up a virtual machine takes like nothing oh here we go so uh, basically this over here tells me blah 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 about chrome html5 then here's the actual um so we're gonna be using a program called uh zen map gui a graphical user inter interface port scanner uh, f it's a front end for free and open source end map Nmap is a free scanner that allows you to determine open ports on a remote host, which is really useful for hacking and for securing said system. And ping is just a command for TCP IP connectivity between hosts. So let's kick it at. Um, so we want to open up this. And I'm going to drag this up to the top monitor here. Booyah. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go to Window Capture Properties and say OK. There we go. And on this one, I need to click Windows Properties there. I have to do this double because I'm doing it on uh, YouTube and Periscope. So 
there's this environment and then on this one as well so sorry I'm just trying to stretch it so it's more visible and then I should be able to click on this again and what am I supposed to do? Click on CM uh, command. All right, click on this. Now I'm in the virtual machine. So this popped up um, in another tab. And then I'm supposed to type in Give me here. I'm trying to get my bearings. All right. So I want IP config. Wow, that's a little delay there. All right. Now I want to ping. So I'm going to ping two ends. I have a very nice mechanical keyboard, but for this, it sucks because it's registering my slight delay as a double keystroke. So I want to ping 203 203.0.113.113.100. that right? I think that's right. There we go. So now I want to use nmap as the next command. nmap. And then I want to do the same IP 203.0.113.100. See what happens. Oh, I got two A's. See, that's what I'm telling you. This So this sucks, in my opinion. This really sucks, because I'm not hitting the A key twice at all. It's In fact, I'm going slow. And look at that. The You see that? Look at the... So it's nmap with two A's. 203.0.11. And then instead of it just being 11. So what is ACN? ACN. Those, those are... ACN. What is so it's like there's extra input. ACN. ACN. What the hell? I don't know where the extra um I don't know where the extra in from inputs coming from. It it's not me doing it. I don't know where it's coming from. What the hell? Sorry, this is this is the problem. This is like problems with doing stuff like this. I I can't deal with this kind of shit myself. It's like I should be able to type as fast as I want in a remote environment. Good God, this is nuts. And then I have to go back and kill one of those A's. So let's just kill that one. There we go. And then see if that is less of a pain in the ass. There we go. So, yeah, I'm going to have to talk to my instructor and tell him that, you know, maybe maybe the other thing is that it's actually um, because of OBS Studio running. Maybe I should try it without OBS Studio and see if it does the same thing. And maybe I just can't live stream the classes or something asinine like that. All right, and now I guess what I need to do is Zen map. So, see, there it is, Zen map. This, this is frustrating. And then I want to hit that target of the two zero three dot zero dot one one three. Is it throwing shit in there again? Nope. Yeah, it did, didn't it? 
Let me read that. It says 20C3. So it's throwing C. What is that? C A N? Is that what it's throwing in there? I forget. Where is that damn text coming from? 203.0100. I need to ask my classmates if anybody else is having problems. Dot 100, I think. Dot 100. Okay. And then scan, probably, I would guess. Let's see, is that right? Scan. Intent scan, yeah. And then it should give me all the ports and tell me what they're for. Sure enough. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but so what we have is open ports. And then I think I should be able to go to ports host up here. Like this. Oh, maybe I have to wait until it's done. Oh, maybe it's not done yet. Initiating service scan port at 11.56. So, campus.edu. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I guess the scan can take up to four minutes to run. And then if I go to... All right. So I don't know if this is interesting to anyone else, but I'm a little bit perturbed that it keeps throwing all this extra text in there. I don't know where it's coming from. I really don't know where it's coming from. Maybe someone hacked me and they're just having fun with me. Good times. it's done yet sorry this takes a little while it's running um in map on a virtual server to see what's there that looks done oh maybe not I spoke too soon oh well maybe if i go to ports and hosts ports and hosts ports and hosts no nope. so yeah, I may not be able to stream these, be, or at least not on uh, YouTube and um, Periscope at the same time. Even though this computer's, I'm sure, completely capable of handling it, it definitely... Definitely is being a pain in the ass. It's throwing extra text into the virtual machine when I type on the keyboard. And I'm not sure where it's coming from, but it seems to be the same three letters. It seems to be C A N. Like, maybe it's trying to say, Can I has cheeseburger or something, and I just haven't let it get far enough. <sighs> Is it done? I don't know. Truth be told, I don't know if it's done or not. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. So we've got an Apache server, Postgres database, uh, MySQL, Java, Apache web server, mail server. Okay, FTP server. So there's quite a few things up in there. 
What do I need to do? Click on the firewall. So it says to close out of this, and it'll say, are you sure, and you say exit anyways, close anyways. <coughs> okay, and then here, yeah, that pisses me off. Do you see the extra text? I'm using a mechanical keyboard, and I don't know, I don't know what the hell, I don't know why it's doubling up on letters and throwing extra letters in there. But anyways, this is just one of those problems with online classes is this does suck. Um, I don't, the infosec learning crap, I'm going to have to find out if I can talk to somebody in support because I can't deal with this. Um, I'm typing exit and it's throwing extra letters and stuff in here. All right, what's next? So next is closing, closing the ports on a PFSense firewall. So now I have multiple, uh, so here's now I'm opening another one, which is the Windows Server. And I need to probably send the control alt delete to log into the server. There we go. Now what do I need to do? Administrator is the username. So capital A, nope, lowercase administrator. can't tell the window so small and then p at ss w zero rd and I can't see so this is really gonna be a pain in the ass if it doesn't like it well that one seemed to work okay because see where that would be a pain if you have extra input from your keyboard So now I'm logged into both the um, the Windows 8 Enterprise virtual machine and the Windows Server virtual machine both simultaneously. So this is nice to have a powerful computer because now you're you're up on two virtual machines at the same time. So RAM RAM here is very important CPU and internet connection is very important for this type of a lab it makes it so much easier and now I want Mozilla Firefox there it is we have Chrome Internet Explorer and Firefox and we want Firefox and then up here I want to type in what does it say 192.168.1 1.254 I think it says so this one doesn't seem to give me nearly the bullshit double entries that the other one does yeah it did I said oh I'm just missing a double uh, a period in there I think let's see 192.16 oh yeah there's I can't tell what the numbers are. It's so small. View full screen. Yeah, it threw an F in there. So I don't know where these letters and numbers are coming from. There's the PF Sense firewall. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that or not. But this is.
and then we want admin admin oh there it is boom are you getting it nope you're not all right so this damn admin holy crap this is gonna drive me completely crazy So the problem I'm having is that is my my keyboard is a programmer's keyboard and it's mechanical and for some reason some of the keys added keys are it's detecting keys from somewhere I don't know where so so here is three windows open I've got the Windows 8 attack machine from North Korea no joke that's that's what we're dealing with. So the Windows 8 machine is coming with an IP address out of North Korea. I am logging into the Windows server and there's a box on there that's metasploitable and now I want to put up a pfSense to keep the North Koreans out of my server. So it's kind of funny, but that's what that's what we're doing here. We're we're working on securing our server to keep the North Koreans out of our server. And I wish to God this was like live instead of like virtual machines somewhere else because this sucks ass. It's slow and buggy, and it could just be the fact that I'm double streaming on um, YouTube and Periscope. So. I'll do this without scoping just to see if there's any difference at all, which I hope there is, because if there isn't, I'm going to pull my hair out. So what do I want to do in PFSense? Probably close up those open ports, right? So what do I want to do? I want to go to the NAT um, firewall. Where are we here? Firewall, NAT. Network address translation probably in let's see. Um, check all the protocols except for 443 HTTPS. So all of them with this one. So boom, boom, boom. Right on down the line here. You, you, not you. Sorry this is slow, but all right. So I need to select all those and then create a rule, probably something like this. What's this one here? Delete selected rules. Yep. Yep, that's what I was told to do. And then apply changes. Oh, what I do? I wasn't supposed to do that. I don't think. I was supposed to not do the uh, WAN address. Oh well. I'm gonna do this without the. Uh, let's see what I can do on this. Can I do anything? Power down. Yeah, planned. Security issue. Okay, shut down. Shut down the North Koreas are in our box. Get out of here. So, um, basically, this is an InfoSec lab on securing a PFSense firewall, and it's just throwing extra characters for my keyboard in here. So, I'm going to shut off the live streaming to see if it live streaming is causing it or if they've got something else causing issues. Whatever it is, it's it's not very nice. It's a little bit obnoxious, to be honest. So whatever's happening, I'm going to shut it down. So that was that. This is the this is a North Korean server. Can I open Internet Explorer? 
see if I can open Google in North Korea. <laughs> Sorry, we can't open Google in North Korea or something. I don't know. So, shut that down. Um, yeah, I pretty much think that's the the gist of what I was trying to do. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to figure out if I'm having more problems. I don't know what's going on with this, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know where the trouble is, so...